pet enthusiasts. Welcome to Pet Chat. My name is Jason Zakowski. I'm the dog dad of Bunsen and Beaker and the cat something of Ginger. Bunsen and Beaker are the science dogs on social media. My co-host is... Chris Zakowski, also known as Mummy Fave, and I am the... Uh, wife of Jason, and <laughs> I am the dog mom of Bunsen and Beaker. I am the cat mom of Ginger, and my children, our children, are our human children are Duncan and Adam. Yes. Um, sometimes Adam pops in, but he's at band camp right now, isn't he? At Camp Caroline or something? Uh, we want, just want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, BarkAndBeyondSupply.com. If you're here till the end of the show, we will randomly throw a number into the number generator. And if you win, the prize today is a $20 gift certificate from BarkAndBeyondSupply.com. They're our sponsor and they're amazing. I think we'll get going with the game though. So hustle, hustle into the game. We are going to get started with Kahoot. Okay, here we go. October 1st, first pet chat. Question number one. Bunsen had a rough go this week. Why? He hurt his paw. He got into a fight with the cat. He misses winter. Or he rolled in poop and was stinky. Why did Bunsen have a rough go this week? And the correct answer is he rolled in poop and was stinky. And he just went. Uh oh, stinky. No, no. No, Chris. Well, he didn't think he had a bad week. He smelled great, according to himself. According to Bunsen. He, he was really fresh cologne. He was so. Uh, whatever he rolled in, it was caked down the side of his head. And we tried to like, uh, we didn't have time to take him to town because he's so big. We've got to take him to like a car wash to get him cleaned. Um, and we tried to brush yeah, it out. A dog wash. A dog wash. people imagining that we take him through the car wash and we shove him in jumbo and then turn on the, <laughs> no. It's Wouldn't that be funny wash? with the, you know how the octopus comes by? Like, whoop, 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 you know, like the soapy octopus things. Yeah. He loves that. Yeah. When he's inside the car. Yeah. He loves yeah. car washes. Yes. <laughs> but a dog wash. Yeah. Oh, and then we finally brushed it out of his head and he smells OK now, which is fine. But he just wanted love because we've been gone and then we couldn't really hug him and give him cuddles because he was so rank. He smelled so bad. So he no. had, Listen, he you said, I'm not going to give you love and I'm not going to give you cuddles. And I said, mm -hmm. fine, I will brush him and I brushed him. Well, but so that, that was that was day. Him. That was two days of him being stinky. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. Oh. On the Science Podcast this week, we looked at how dogs drink. How do they drink? Using vacuum pressure like humans, slurp the water up like a ladle, ladle, I think I spelled that wrong, slam their tongue into the water and retract it quickly, or use their tongue like a straw. Now, I think some people are going to get this wrong. Okay, it was, see, like we had a lot of people say slurp the water up like a ladle. That's not true. Um, we posted a video. It was just kind of happened at the same time. We were talking about the science of how dogs drink. And Chris, did you, do you know how dogs drink? You, you didn't, have, you weren't part of the me cutting the podcast together. I don't think you listened to it. No, but I watched the video and it does definitely look like they slam their tongue in the water. They curl underneath and they do scoop it up like a ladle. No, they don't. That's what the video looks like. That's, that's what, what it looks like on the video. Yeah, that's what the video looks like. But that's not true. The dogs slam their tongue into the water and then they retract it at multiple times the acceleration of gravity. And what that does is it creates a water siphon. Um, basically because water is attracted to itself. Water's hydrophilic. I'm going to start getting nerdy and talking about science here if I'm not careful, but that creates like an upwards water column of, of like just from them slamming it and pulling it back up. It draws the water up like a reverse water fountain and then they bite it. So they don't actually ladle it into their mouth. They create this, they create a backwards, backwards water fountain and they bite it. 
like they bite it down and dogs with bigger tongues it's a lot easier to see like uh german shepherds or even bunsen so like the video today like the video of the dog that slammed its tongue into the water and scooped it backwards jason you know i love it when you talk nerdy to me but i think this is one of those semantic things of the woo or well well i didn't have my sound effect i was getting my other sound effect for talking nerdy to you ready but (laughs) but that but that didn't that failed because i went too far on my soundboard and now it's not going to work so back to the drawing board back to the drawing board okay anyways um we should get a clear water dish and tape bunsen drinking because he's so loud And his tongue is so large. He is. Yeah. His tongue is ridiculous. Okay. Here we go. Next question. Ginger's new favorite thing to use as a scratch post is Beaker's bed, Bunsen, dad guy's computer bed, bag, or the new couch. I don't know. This may be an unfair question. Did we ever talk about this? Okay. Okay. So a lot of people went with dad guys. Computer. We did. We talked about the teacher stare. We talked about Beaker oh, and that's the right. teacher stare. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Our new couch, the Ginger's, this is Ginger's favorite thing to scratch. And then when she does, Beaker stops what she's doing anywhere in the house and comes and then just stares at her. <laughs> just like gives her this Beaker glare. It's super cute. And, and it doesn't work anymore. Ginger doesn't care. Um, she cares a little bit when Beaker like gets her really quickly and is like, mm, 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 Ginger's like, okay. <laughs> I know, but it's a good thing. We got a lazy boy couch and it doesn't it have, didn't the guy say it has a lifetime warranty, even with cat scratches? Mm-hmm. We, we were like, really? Cause, Cause we had gone to other locations and they, uh, their quality wasn't as good. And they're also their warranty doesn't cover pet okay, damage, cr- but we're not getting sponsored by lazy boy. No, we should no, get sponsored not. by Lazy Boy. Because so, Bunsen is a lazy boy. We could just say that. Bunsen is a lazy boy. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. I didn't even tell a P. I've been... Okay, who's in first place? Bianca, then Paula, Cooper, Cher, and Megan. Are you playing today, Chris? I think you are, and you're not doing very well. Um. No, I didn't like the ladle question. <laughs> okay. I was on the podium. Okay, here we go. Next question. The new baby chicken, which is called Fart, which was called Fart, is now called what? Billy, Bart, Matza, or Fromage? And you'd have to listen to the podcast to get this because Adam talked about this in the family section. Here we go. Billy, Bart, Matza, or Fromage? And it's Matza. So, (laughs) look, a lot of people pick Bart. More than half of everybody picked Bart. Um, why is the, why is the baby chicken called matzah again, Chris? Okay, so uh, she's or he, we're not sure if it's a rooster or a hen yet, is a blonde, a blonde color, like a white colorish chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're hoping that um, this chicken contains that or remains that color um, as it continues to grow. Um, and uh, it does look like matzah cheese. Matzah cheese, hey? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so even if it goes a little bit yellow, that's okay, um, because depending um, on the diet of the, uh, where does it come from? I think it comes from some sort of sheep, maybe. I don't know. Um, that <laughs> a sheep? What did you cheese, say? The cheese? Oh, cheese, I thought you were talking about milk? the chicken. I'm like, if, no, no, that no. would be an angry letter from some genetics board. <laughs> Anyway, it depends. Like the cheese can either be white or a little bit yellow, um, depending on the diet of wherever they get it from, the milk of wherever they get it from. Did so you prepare it, like some background on cheese before this space? I'm so impressed. Uh yes. Mon <laughs> Dieu. Oh my goodness. Fromage. Well, we have to hand it to Buster because Buster What is love? Got jiggy with some other chicken, and now we have baby chickens. So, well, we'll hopefully, we're gonna have some more baby chickens. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Go, Buster. PJ thirteen. PG thirteen. That's okay, Chris. All right. Thanks for the tip. Okay. All right. I gotta get back to my other soundboard here. 
All right, so in first place, we have Bianca, and then we have somebody I'm not going to say is in second place, Paula, Cooper, and then Cher. So last question. Here we go. Beaker likes this body of water on walks through the creek. Beaker Dam. Beaker Slough. Beaker Pond or Beaker Lake. There's a body of water that we've named because Beaker spends way too much time in it. It is the Beaker Slough. Um, how long was she in Beaker Slough today, Chris? Oh, she was in there a while. She was in there a while. She's I know. so happy. And so usually we just say, oh, come on. But today we let her wallow in it, um, but not in pity in the pond. She was having the time of her life. She was digging and ripping out <laughs> roots and Bunsen was beside the water because he doesn't go in the water, but he was also ripping on grass and digging and they were frolicking <laughs> and having a great time. It was beautiful today. Yeah. And we just said, yeah, let them, let them be dogs. Ah, uh, Oh, how do I, Chris, how do you get to the third, the, the fourth and fifth person on Kahoot? Um, I don't know because who's on the podium. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Funny. So in first place, oh, shoot, back to the podium. One second, everybody. Okay, I just got to let it. <laughs> Sarah says I got approximately zero questions right. All right. So in first place, we have Bianca. No, Paula. Sorry. It, Paula's in first place. Good job, Paul. In second, we have Bianca. And in third place, we have Megan. And Cooper is runner up. Um, if by Cooper you mean Slim Shady is on the podium. No, I don't see Slim Shady anywhere. Oh, well, maybe check your adjusting. Maybe get some glasses. Chris, you can't log in and play this game. I've told you this before. You, and you won. You can't. You have like my listening skills this is, are la 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 undeterred. This is this is this is like insider trading is what's happening right now. Illegal. I need a cop siren. Illegal is what's happening. That is not a cop sound. That okay, I am limited easy. with the sixty sounds I put into my soundboard, so that's the closest I got. So, anyways. Um, Chris, would you like to start your story while I start sure. chucking some stuff up in the nest to get us going? Absolutely. So, oh, and we should do a re like for people that are tuning in. They're like, what is going on here? Um, do you want to do a room reset? Go ahead. Tell everybody what's going on. This will be my very, very first room reset. So what we are doing is we are on <laughs> pet chat with Bunsen and Beaker, um, and dad guy and myself. <laughs> And it's called Pet Chat, and we come every Saturday, and we talk about our pets. And so, first of all, we start with a game and, and some shenanigans, and then we listen to – then oh. we share our pet stories, and then we listen to your pet stories. And so, it's a community that we've built together, um, and we appreciate everybody who has tuned in to listen to Pet Chat here Um on Twitter spaces. And actually we are casting out in numerous locations like clubhouse wisdom, um, Facebook live and Twitter. No on LinkedIn Asian. today. No LinkedIn. No LinkedIn today. No. Okay. So no. we are right now where we are Penta casting. Do you know That's what, amazing. do you know what happens uh, if we get up to like, do you know what happens if we get up to six, Chris? Yeah, but it's a PG rated show. It's, I heard you try to say it this morning. Yeah, it's sexta casting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How's so, it going throwing things in the nest? Oh, okay. Um, okay. It's going great. Look, I've got things from our sponsor, Bark and Beyond supply.com bark and beyond a strawberry donut plush cat toy yes bark and beyond supply.com is a small family-owned business that got to work making joint supplements for their dog and then progressed into making uh like getting toys for sale and toys and treats and bow ties and leashes and and apparently strawberry donuts um bark and beyond is sponsoring us today and if you're around by the end of the space, you get a $20 gift certificate. They also have um, what? The winner. The winner of the, uh, the draw. Yes. The winner the of the randomly assigned number that I will be putting into some algorithm. Um, also, check out Bark and Beyond Supplies 
feed because they've got lots of pictures of amazingly cute dogs. Aww. Okay. I'll keep putting stuff in the nest. Go, Chris. What's your story? Okay. So as you may or may not know, Jason's dad. Um, oh, you're going to tell that story? You're going to tell them? This for, no, go ahead. That, go ahead. It's such, is that it's, the story that you were going to tell? I was because it's so good. No, go ahead. Well, you can tell that no, story. No, 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 no. You tell it. It's good. It's so heartwarming. It's a good one. Okay. Okay, go well, ahead. I can tell this. I can tell this story about going to the creek today. Well, it's up to you. Already, no, you tell the you tell the you tell the story you were going to go. Go, go for it. It's all okay. good. Okay. So yesterday, I reached out to Rob um, because every day he goes for a walk. Um, and as I mentioned, we had a national holiday, um, but not everywhere uh, had it as a holiday. Um, but our school divisions did. So we had the day off and, Mm -hmm. um, I said to Adam, Hey, I'm going to contact grandpa Rob to see, um, if he, what time he's going for his walk, because maybe we can fit it in between now and when we have to take you to band camp. Um, and it turned out that didn't work out. Um, and I, so he's like, well, I'm, it doesn't matter what time I go. Um, what's your plan? And, uh, so of course, um, Adam doesn't know how time works. He inherited that from me. Um, (laughs) the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. No, no. So um, I said, oh, we have to take Adam for four o'clock. Uh, is that too late for you to go on your walk? And he's like, no, that's all right. Um, so just text me when you're, when you're close. And I said, can I bring the dogs? And he said, oh, yeah, for sure. So I get out of the, I drop Adam off at band camp um, and or at the school to get taken to band camp. And then I have the dogs with me. And it was super cute. Um, because they got to interact with the other dogs that the parents, other parents, band parents had brought, um, which is always good. It's always good for that extra socialization. Um, and Bunsen <laughs> met one <laughs> called Be- Little Bean. Yeah. Uh, Bean's a, she's a cutie. Um, but uh, she jumped in Bunsen's face and kind of growled at him. And he's just like, mm, uh, mm, I didn't really like that. But uh, he's so nice and passive, and whereas Beaker's more like, "Oh, that's not going to happen here." That's yeah, not how you want to fight? You want to fight, bro? Let's let's roll. Let's ride. Or, yeah. Beaker's ride or die. Like you want to go? <laughs> we'll go right now. This second, dog. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm very glad I had Adam with me. So he took Bunsen over to see uh, the dog, and then I had Beaker separate. Um, but I think they were already revved because they were in the car. They were so excited. They knew they were going for a W W A L K. They know that word. Um, and so they were like, what is going on? And they were just a burst of energy, <laughs> buns and two. Um, anyway, so then I, uh, met up with Jason's dad, Rob, and we, uh, went for a walk and, uh, he goes every day past the hospice, um, where Diane, uh, spent the last, uh, days of her life. Uh, so that's hard. Um, but he, uh, talked about, um, getting a thank you letter from the hospice and all uh, the donations that uh, people came in uh, in Bunsen Beaker's name, which is thank you so much if 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 you did that. That yeah, for the that people that thank you. yeah, for the, it was they were overwhelmed with how many people donated to the hospice. Yeah, um, people from all over the world. So thank you, thank you. Um, but we got to walk by and then um, go through the memorial garden, and we talked about. Um, how we're going to plant something uh, there in her name. Um, And then we kept going because you can go to, uh, it's like, it's called Andrews on the Lake in the area, but really it's just a very small body of water, like a catch basin. Um, We call it Andrews on the Slough, (laughs) but it's, it's, it was very nice. So we walked around um, and then uh, Jason texted, Hey, um, how's it going? And then I called you. And I said, hey, I'm just walking with your dad. Why don't you uh, come up and join us? And so Jason's like, perfect. Yep, because he was done his appointment. And then um, you joined us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we walked the rest of the way back to Jason's dad's house. And you could tell the story about. um, When we got to my dad's house. Yeah, you can continue the story. Okay. So we need to tag in. I don't have a tag team like bing, 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 like tag button. So to continue this story, the first part of it was really good because you you did you got to hang out with my dad and the dogs love my dad. They just they just love him. I don't know what it is about my dad, but they just love him. And a little bit too much, you said, because he's still on crutches from his total hip replacement and they might just yeah. about knocked him over because 
they don't well, understand. Well, they tangled him. They tangled Anchor him. went around him one way and Bunsen went around him the other and the yeah. leashes were there and then I had to drop their leashes and then they're like running to the door <laughs> like, why aren't we going inside? Why aren't we going inside? What's going on? And yeah. then I'm like, okay, I got both of you now. And then they were, then we started walking and then they tangled around him again. So I'm like, do not, please do not take out Grandpa Rob. Yeah, that would be bad. Um, so we walked back to my dad's house and you may, you may or may not know, but we've mentioned it before. Um, in April, my parents took in two Ukrainian refugees from the Ukrainian conflict with Russia who were fleeing like just total devastation and bombs and death and destruction and all of that. Uh, it was a mom and a daughter. Um, Marina and Jane are their name. Marina is the mom and Jane is the daughter. Um, and they, these, the mom and the daughter fled Ukraine with basically a backpack full of stuff. And that was it. Uh, Marina was a school teacher and Jane was a typical normal te- teenager. Like Jane's just like a teenager from another country. And then their lives were just smashed into a thousand pieces. Um, they somehow got to Canada and somehow wound up with my parents. And uh, they've been learning English. Uh, Jane knows a little bit like Jane has come so far. Hey, Chris, with her English. hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Like she... She's doing so good. And Marina's English went from like nothing, like virtually no English to like she can have she understands when you talk to her and she can make conversation, um, which is a huge testament to how hard she's working. Okay, and, Jason, there is no testament to how hard she's working. Marina is she has like, to be, yeah. she has to work at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, and she works all day at a very, very difficult and hard job. Yeah. Um, like for more than 12 hours. And then she has been taking two English classes a week yeah. um, in person at the Central Alberta Refugee Effort Immigration yeah. Center. Um, and I have been picking her up every Tuesday and Thursday night. Um, where she has been from 6 to 8.30 because buses don't run that late. So I Mm. pick her up and we have conversation all the way home. Um, And then she's also taking Zoom English classes, I believe, two two or three more times a week, every evening. So She's super driven. She's incredible. She's incredible. She's an amazing person. So this is where, why is this pet chat? Well, we had Bunsen and Beaker. And the first time they met Bunsen and Beaker was... uh, I think the first time was the their first week in Canada. And I think they were like just overwhelmed with everything. And uh, Bunsen is huge. And he, if you don't know that he's friendly and maybe you're not too sure about dogs, he's terrifying because he's giant, right? So w- we bring them in. And of course, Bunsen and Beaker love people. So they want to go see Marina and Jane. And to start with, I think Marina was quite scared of Bunsen because Bunsen turned around and shoved his butt, like wiggled his butt back into Marina and then sat down and she went to pet him. And then he turned his head to look at her and she kind of she kind of let out a little scream, uh, maybe because she thought he was going to bite her or something, but he was just wanting to look at her. Um, But over the hour that we were visiting, (laughs) Marina just loved Bunsen. He would like squirm back into her. And then he was, you know, had a big walk. So his tongue was just hanging out the side of his head. He looked like a cartoon. He was about the same size as Marina too. And she was just petting him on the head and he just couldn't get enough of Marina petting him. And then of course, Beaker loves my dad. So she was going back and forth for, to Marina, to, to Jane, to my dad. Um, so it was really heartwarming to see these dogs just say hello to the Ukrainian uh, mom and daughter and then Bunsen just knows what he has to do when people aren't sure it's like he just knows he knows he can get his his uh his activity up around people that like it and he can calm right down around people that need it like especially when he's at the with kids right around the like the space science center he who's like all these kids were everywhere and he knew he had to be super calm and just gentle and just sit there and let them pet him and then he did the same thing with Marina. Like he was not rambunctious. He just kind of like was there. And uh, um, and then then he was tired and he laid down. And Jane or and Marina thought that was really funny too. That whoop, yeah, because he, he was because like, he was taking up the whole floor. And his tongue was go like that. Like he just he went bleh, and he stuck his tongue out. It was like laying on the floor. <laughs> yeah, he was he was tired. He was hot. It was a it was a walk. It was. It yeah. was fun. So at the very end, Marina asked to take her picture with Bunsen and Beaker. Um, which was really cute. So I got them to pose with her and she gave them hugs like on either side. So that that's the heartwarming Bunsen and Beaker story. 
Is, is that where you were going with yours? Um, well, I'm glad you, uh, I was, but, uh, we, we got to share that story. Okay. Do you want to talk about the Creek? Uh, no, you can. We already talked about the Creek. We went for a walk on the Creek and Beaker went in the water at the end. Okay. (laughs) I have a picture of how muddy Beaker got and you took a whole bunch of video from the Creek nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. It was nonsensical. She was having the time of her life. Um, and <laughs> it's like, hmm, is that our dog? What dog is that coming out of the creek? Yeah. I don't, what other stories there. do we have or should we open it up to the community? Um, well, so as, as we know, this week was busy. Um, it was a Royals night on Wednesday where it was the banquet supper. So I had to uh, go set up and, uh, get that organized. And then um, Thursday, I have my monthly one one time a month, I go diva town and 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 get some aesthetics done. So that was Thursday night for me. Um, and so Bunsen's just been missing us. And he mm-hmm. likes to get up at 5am and be like, Oh, hi. Um, That's how I he gets more time with us. He's sneaky. He's like, I'll just get up, I'll just get up earlier. I'll get up earlier. I'll get up at three. Up. now. screw you guys. <laughs> Your home. Yeah, I I really think that's what's going through. He's his head. so smart. I'm just realizing that's what he's doing. He's making us get yeah. up earlier so he has more time with us. Yes, I think that's what's happening. Because when I was teaching from home, um, he had me all day, and now he doesn't. So <laughs> he just I don't know. Maybe we're just thinking outside the box here. <laughs> um, but five a.m. is an early start. So I've been up uh, three times this week with him. Don't you know what the, that's what the gym bros say in their their uh, their threads? Get up at five, work out for three hours a day, eat sunlight. You know those threads. The gym bros. Yeah, I mean it yeah. does help if you get up at five to work out. I'm not going to take that away, but that's that's kind of early. Um, before we get to the com- before we get to the community section, where we invite people to come up and share stories, um, a couple things. I see cowboy cat wrench cat the cowboy cat ranch is in the audience. And that is the person that runs that account is Dr. Sebastian Ball. He's the one that sent us the um, socks with different types of cat attracting plants in them. So I just want to give a shout out to Cowboy Cat Ranch. Um, And we filmed the first part of the finale of Catnip 6. So if you've been invested in that, it's coming to a close. And I will be cutting together the footage tonight, I think. And then we will have part one of the finale tomorrow. So that's kind of exciting. The other thing is it's not quite ready. We're hoping it's going to be ready for tomorrow. And that is the Paw Pack Plus community. We are opening to the public. Right now, the only people that have had access to it is we've been moving from Patreon. So some folks who support us on Patreon, um, they are, they are been, they've been moved or we've been moving to the Paw Pack Plus, which is a community on the Circle platform. And not, I'm, we're not, I'm not expecting anybody or everybody to join. We'd love for you to join. It is a paid community. It's a way to support what we do because, um, as Canadians, we don't have access to, the super follower thing that some of you see on accounts, there's like this little super follower button. We will never have access to that. That's American only accounts. So we thought of a way that we could have like a super follower type thing, but take it to the nth degree, like make it so much better than what you would get on super follows on Twitter. So we have uh, in this pop pack plus community, um, there are these different, different spaces that you can check out and the 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 pup tier for example has access to private twitter so that's just like super follows we have a whole private twitter account that you'll be invited to and then there are these different spaces that are a lot of fun so there's one called moose legs for the soul and that's where we are going to be sharing the best stories about pets and there's already like five or six in there um there's there's also live streaming thursday so every thursday i set up a, a webcam so you can take a look at bunsen and beaker and ginger all day on thursday and then we make sure that uh, they interact with everybody because we've got a furbo set up which shoots treats at them um And then there's other stuff on there too, like pet of the month. So we're getting everybody to submit stuff about their pet and then your pet's going to be featured. So it's like super follows, but just so much better. 
and that has only been accessible by our patrons. And we are going to be opening that up to the public, hopefully tomorrow in our newsletter. So I'll throw something up there about our newsletter in a second. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, it's totally free. I send it out once a week. Um, it's got a recap of what's happening with our family, the best tweets of the week, scientist highlights what's happening on our audio shows. And then there's some things like we, the things we have on our merch store and, and things like that. So that's what the newsletter is about. And if it's ready, we will have the link in the newsletter and we'll be talking about it a lot because it's a big deal. Um, Chris and I have worked all summer to build the Paw Pack Plus and it's uh, it's it's going to become this amazing thing like there's all of these different spaces there's the science lab which has my science experiments and um then there's the pets the pet space which we have partnered with different trainers so it's a whole thing so that's my monologue about the pop pack plus did you want to add anything chris before we let people speak are you there chris did i lose everybody uh, no, I'm just definitely, uh, again, in the middle of doing a tweet in the chat, um, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I was just going to say the Pop Pack uh, Plus community um, is really that. It is a community plus. There's just so many things that Jason talked about, um, and it's really, really worth it. When I go on and look, I just am gobsmacked um, by how great it is. Yeah. And I don't know if Paula is in, uh, I think Paula's on Facebook Live right now, but Paula Moses is our community moderator. And I just want to give her a shout out. She's learning how to do stuff on Circle. Um, and uh, I just want to thank her for that. She's lining up people to write articles. She's writing up, getting people to write tips and tri tricks articles and all of that. So shout out to Paula. Thank you so much. Okay. I think we can probably go to the community. Hey. So uh, do you want to read the ground? Do you want to talk about the ground rules for sharing, Chris? Or are you doing a tweet? Absolutely. I, I was doing a tweet in the chat still, but I <laughs> okay. am very quick. Um, but yes, the ground rules are um, we are we like to vet um, the people who request to speak. So we do a quick look through your timeline and your profile. Um, to see if you are um, either following one of us or following people that we know um, or are being followed by people that we know, um, just to make sure that uh, nothing sketchy is going along. If going on, if you have a locked account, um, we might not. Uh, unless we know you. you. Unless we know you. We may, we may not allow you up to speak. Um and did I cover it, Jay? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah. thanks. So if you'd like to share a pet story or if you have a question for us, we'd love for you to talk. This is uh, this is your time to share anything you have about pets or if you have questions about Bunsen, Beaker, Ginger or our what we do for content, this is your time to, to share. Um, next pet chat, we have a special guest named John Rush who is going to be our guest. Um, a lot of you who are in dog Twitter know exactly who John Rush is. He's this awesome former football player with two giant dogs. Um, Chris, do you want me to let the speakers up or do you, are you on top of that? Um, I can be on top of that. I see you're trolling me in the comments. This is why <laughs> you are so distracted as you are trying to fact check me in the comments. I thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Okay. looks like, are you letting people up? I don't want to step on your toes. Uh, you go ahead. Okay. So, well, here we go. Um, so we've got Anne, Paula, Sarah. Yeah, for right now, Anne, you can go first. How's it going, Anne? Good, thank you. Um, just along the lines of the Beaker Ginger story, if my 17-year-old cat, who is still extremely active, decides to pick at the chair, the dog runs down the stairs and <laughs> barks. And the cat gives her a look the ginger gives beaker i'm sure of you really think you're going to stop me <laughs> i have claws and you don't um and it's it's all because the cat has heard me say no the dog has heard me say no and the dog has taken it upon herself to be the chair police oh <laughs> 
Well, so, yeah, that's good. I think I think sometimes cats need to be policed because they're kind of ungovernable. Yes, they are. They are. They are. Have had them since I was five, and they very much have a mind of their own. You know <laughs> the old expression: "Dogs come when they're called; cats take a message." Yeah. Well, Jin, you know, to, to, uh, for Ginger's credit, she does like we are training her to to come. It's just not as snappy as Bunsen or Beakers. It's like it's more a it's more a <laughs> saunter. Like she'll come, she's gonna do yes. it, but it's like you know, maybe today it's at my speed. <laughs> well, it's a little sassy. It's sassy, yes. <laughs> it's like if I have to. I guess so. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I just want, it's nice to know that there's another dog that polices the cat. <laughs> well, that's Beaker. Uh, Ginger walks all over Bunsen. Oh. But, yeah. <laughs> the big guy just, but it's cute, uh, Chris, because we've been noticing Ginger will find where Bunsen sleeps and s- most nights will sleep next to him, which is super cute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's super cute. Um, she's always uh, around him. And then sometimes when he walks by, she squats at him you <laughs> no. know, just, to, just to put him in his place. I guess he does nothing to like Ginger. This, he does nothing. And I say that he did nothing to you. And then she's like, well, I'm just he's existing. He's like target practice or something. He just saunters by her and she's like, whap, whap, whap. and I'm like, why would you do that? He does nothing to you. He's just so gentle to you all the time. <laughs> yes. Oh, cats. Thanks, so, Anne. Thank you. Take care. Hey, it was good to hear you. Thank you so much. You betcha. Okay, Paula, then Sarah, and then just Peachy Honey. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Paula, how's it going? Our super moderator. Oh, thanks. I was on uh, Facebook, but I have a I have a pseudo name on Facebook, so probably everybody's going, who's that? You but anyway, guys have yeah. been chatting it up a storm on the Facebook Live. There's like <laughs> 40 comments, Paula. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I know. Well, well, hey, we, we got to drum it up for you. But anyway, um, what, what I was going to say is I don't have a pet story, but I, I know about dog police because um, if I get excited or my husband gets excited, Annie goes ballistic or something. If we like rush over to Olive or do something, she's very intuitive, too. So um, and then she always knows the woodpecker on the house. So if, it, if she hears one little burp, she's already barking <laughs> like crazy. So that's our our school police, Annie. We call her we call her actually mall cop, because if you remember mall cop, she just stands in the hallway, like <laughs> listening for my husband to come downstairs. It drives me crazy. And if she hears one little creak in his little office upstairs she knows that he's coming down she starts barking so we just call her ball cop <laughs> but anyway but what i want to do is plug you guys i'm i'm going to say this to everybody listening i, I know you, you know you've heard about the new p3 community but it the circle community is so awesome and please please just come and and just check it out and see uh i think you'd really you know love it and uh if anybody has any stories they want to share um you know where to find me on Twitter. So just send me a DM and um, I'll be happy to uh, set you up with that. So, but it's really great. It's fun to see all the different categories and the things I'm so excited for you guys. And I think having like the scientists all, you know, featured and stuff is. is Oh yeah. That's another thing. Like I can't remember everything that's on the, the, the podcast. That's that's so great because you know, sometimes you think, Oh man, what was her name? And then you forget to follow or, Mm-hmm. You know, and you want to look up something like the squid ladies, you know, hotline number or whatever she has. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like Dr. You know, Sarah it's, McAnulty, the squid, yes, the squid scientist. I still, get, I still get I still get my squid texts, which makes me laugh because I'm like, who's this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the squid lady. <laughs> but anyway, so but really, um, in all honesty, uh, I'm I'm so excited. So um, please, uh, like I said to everybody, just, you know, if you want to try it, just try at the low ball and if you want and but it, it's just it's just going to be so much fun i think this is going to be like our new twitter right kind of maybe that's the idea yeah that's the idea and i'm i'm i love the moose legs for the soup moose legs for the moose soup for the soul moose soup yeah, yeah instead of chicken soup because all of those stories over the next year that people are sharing chris and i are just gonna we're gonna turn that into an ebook and then a hundred percent of the proceeds are gonna go to some pet thing 
And I think, I think like that's, it's going to, all the stories are so heartfelt and so well, well done. Like Liz just posted one. Um, I can't wait to read it. There's, you know, like there's going to be hundreds of these heartfelt stories in there from everybody. And I think, you know, that, that, that can be something that we can give back as a, as a community of dog lovers, of pet lovers. Oh, absolutely. And it, and it, you know, and if, you know, the people that are already on it, if you've seen even teams post, I mean, you get some background of how these people started, which I think is really compelling. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, like I said, I could go on and on. I don't want to keep too much time on here because I know you got a lot of people up. So, um, but like I said, thank you. And uh, thank you for making me be moderator. I'm, I'm trying my best. You guys better be good because if you're not, you're going to get a kick in the pants from me. So. <laughs> Paul, yeah. Paula can give you a badge that says poopy or something like that. Yeah, definitely need some badges there, Jason. <laughs> you got to give me some, something to go by there or something. I don't know. Oh, we can give you, you, you know what your badge can be, Paula? Mall cop. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Every oh, time it posts, God. Paula, mall cop. <laughs> no, I don't want mall cop. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a sheriff <laughs> badge. I don't know. Even that's kind of bad. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like what was that guy? Ooh. Yosemite Sam or somebody with a two guns sticking up. Like, yeah, yeah you better behave or else. <laughs> but anyway, so well, thanks guys. I'll I'll let you go. Have a good night, everyone, and be good. <laughs> thanks, Paula. Thanks for chatting it up on Facebook Live. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hey, how are you? We're good. Hello. Um, you know, I, I just got a new puppy and I was reading your thread on introducing, um, Bunsen and Beaker and how you guys did it slowly. And I realized how poorly we did it. Um, (laughs) when we picked up our new puppy, we just brought our beagle. Um, she's, um, five years old, almost five years old. And she's a mean old lady. Um, (laughs) She's very independent. If she didn't need us to feed her, she would pretty much be on her own. Oh. <laughs> um, very, very independent. And when she saw the puppy, the first thing she did was this low growl, mm. um, which she usually only does with around food. She growls every time she eats, even if we walk by her um, and we tell her no and she stops. But um, uh that was her first introduction to the puppy and he was so unfazed oh yeah yeah he was just he was just like hello um i want to be your friend and he would not leave her alone and um i wish i would have done a, a slow introduction because um while she plays nice she does get a little bit too rough she's she's um 50 pounds, whatever that is in Canadian. And um, he's um, 12 pounds, again, U.S., not Canadian. Um, and they're, they're playing right now. I'm, I'm sitting in the yard watching them play. Uh, but she, her tolerance level is very low. So mm-hmm. um, since we did the poor introduction, what do you think would be good ways for us to uh, get them better socialized? Well, I'll give I'll give what uh, one piece piece of advice and then Chris can. And this just comes from um, before we brought Beaker home. We did a lot of research and we talked. I talked to uh, Char, our amazing trainer with Waggles. So it the best thing is you don't want to have a negative experience, like especially it's it, a growl is different than if your beagle had like bit the puppy. Um, because that would set the the relationship back a little bit. Um, because a puppy isn't used to getting bitten out of anger, they usually get nipped like don't like stop by their litter mates, right? They're not used to the um a, a more aggressive bite. So the best thing is to look and let them play together, but look for signs of frustration or look for signs that the older puppy is maxed out. Um, and a good rule of thumb is like five or ten minutes max at a time, like five or 10 minutes. And then if you can tag team them with you and your spouse or you and your partner or child, um, let them have separate time. And, um, that's what we did with Bunsen and Beaker. Uh, Do you have anything else to add, Chris? Uh, no, just that, um, the growls is a way that, uh, animals do communicate, Mm -hmm. um, and just recognizing the signs of what type of growl that it is. Um, because the puppy does need to learn, 
um, what is acceptable play and what isn't. Um, and the, and the puppy will pick up on that. I think they, yeah, they do. Like did, did Bunsen ever growl at Beaker? I'm, I'm trying to remember. No, absolutely not. No, I don't think he ever, but like he, he had enough of her sometimes for sure. Um, yes. And he would run. Beaker was relentless. I think he would just run away. I think he just <laughs> ran away. From, I think he, tried, he ran away from Beaker. So, sorry, Sarah. Bunsen just, he was a pushover. <laughs> he just took no. it. He just took it like a champ. I don't know. Oh, what a good boy. <laughs> I know. Um, our, our cat, we have a cat, Mr. Kitty, Aww. um, who is full grown, but he is very, very, he still looks like a kitten. And when people see him, they're like, oh, you have a new kitten. And we're like, nah, he's five years old. Um, but he went full Halloween cat, that full, like hot, you know, where he got his back up. It was so funny. Um, and he's gentle. Um, he, he plays with the dogs. He doesn't, you know, get aggressive, but he saw that, um, new puppy and all of his fur was up oh. his, he went full <laughs> Halloween cat. And then he, he ran away, which he's very, he's typically aggressive with other cats, but he, he ran away. And we didn't find him for two days. Yep. He, That's it. He ran out the dog door out back. Oh. He didn't come back for two days. Oh, no. He was like, nope, I'm done. Try again. That that's I think like if we had uh like Chris, you have more experience with cats, but um cats are like super they're sensitive to changes with what happens in the household. So they're just like dogs. A hundred percent. And with us when we brought Ginger home, um, we definitely took uh one of the dogs to doggy daycare. Yes. We took Beaker to doggy daycare, so then Bunsen could acclimatize to Ginger because he's more calm. Um and that just allowed for everybody to have just a, a little bit more space. Yeah. Short, so. short interactions with supervision to start with. So, yeah. And as we go through the speaker, Sarah, if there's anybody else that has advice, um, I, I see Dr. Molly Carjun. Yes, please. Um, Dr. Molly Carjun is a puppy scientist, so, or works with dogs. So she might have some expertise to lend um, when we get to her. So thanks, Sarah. Uh, over to Just Peach. Uh, just peachy honey, Tracy. And then, uh, I don't know who's next, Chris, you've let some people up maybe, well, we'll go just peachy honey and then Tracy. Thank you so much. Good evening, wherever you're, wherever you are in the world. Hello. I just want, I just want to start off by saying that you all make my day. Aww. I have wanted a, a I've, I've had like a love hate relationship with animals. So when I was little, I was very scared. And as I got older, it was like, okay, they're okay. Now I am absolutely in love with anything that's fuzzy or Aww. furry. And, <laughs> you know, I want a dog, but my landlord says no. Yeah. But being able to see pages like yours and to see your animals and your comments just really is like, okay, it uh, it pacifies me, you know? So I ended up getting a guinea pig. Oh, right? that's cool. Absolutely freaking adorable, right? Yeah. Accidentally let him train me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I actually let him train me, right? So he has this, um, he had this little walk up thing. So it's a, a, a Heidi, they call him Heidi. So it's like a, it was built like a farmhouse that he could walk up the steps or whatever. So I just started noticing in the morning, he would walk up his little steps and he would just start <laughs> stomping his little feet. And I was like, is he stomping at me? He can't be stomping. He's not stomping. <laughs> and then I realized I would get up and go to the refrigerator. And I was like, and it hit oh. me when. He, <laughs> and it was like he had trained me with the bell <laughs> it was so funny and then I went to the grocery store so because he's just he has fine taste you know only butter lettuce only the finest for my baby <laughs> and he's so food motivated so I get to the, the grocery store I put everything on the counter and the the lady who's checking me out is like oh you I'm just so proud of you you eat so well like everything's organic and all these greens and vegetables and fruits and I was like I have to confess, this is not for me. It's for my guinea pig. <laughs> and she's like, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that little quick story. I thank you guys so much. You guys really make my day. I hope everyone has lots of belly rubs for their little fur babies and keep up the good work, guys. I really appreciate you. Um, I put a picture of your guinea pig up in the nest. What's the guinea pig's name? Teddy. Teddy. Aw. Oh, my goodness. That's adorable. 
And he's a teddy bear. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Have a good evening. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for joining. It's good to see a new face. Thanks. That reminds me of buying the lettuce today for the turtles. It wasn't for us. It was for the turtles. We can't get away from talking about the turtles for one one space, Chris. I like turtles. I like turtles. Yeah. And what? Ginger was was eating? What? I was just saying that that story reminded me of getting lettuce today. Green leaf lettuce for the turtles. Yes, because heaven forbid they eat romaine lettuce or some other lettuce. No, no, it's not nutritionally dense enough. Nor is iceberg lettuce. Nope, it has to be green leaf or red leaf. Well, only the best for Carl and or Sagan, Kristen. Thank you for (laughs) calling me my full name. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, Over to Tracy, and then I think Gia's next. Gia, I see your hand up. Could you wait just a second for Tracy? Okay, perfect. So Tracy, hi. Hi. Um, So since I got in on the tail end of a thought, has um, Ginger actually attacked Bunsen or like tried to swat at Bunsen recently? Or was it just like when they first? Right now we are in the turret room and Ginger swatted his tail. He's got a (laughs) squishy tail and he has leaves stuck to it from earlier. And and then Ginger was like, hmm. And then she was swatting his tail, but uh, Bunsen didn't do anything. He just got up and moved. And Beaker <laughs> was sitting beside me on the couch. And now she's got her razor teacher stare on Beaker or on, on Ginger. So there's, there's, oh, now she's, now she's like very close to Ginger. Um, oh. It's like replay in here, but uh, I've got all three animals right by me here in the turret room. <laughs> Hi, so, yeah, it happens yeah, once it happens once a week, Tracy. That's adorable. I know. <laughs> Who did Ginger um, try to bite, Chris? Was it Bunsen or Beaker? Uh, she tried to bite Beaker's butt. <laughs> no, Beaker turned around <laughs> and Ginger went, ah, and she <laughs> tried to bite like a cat bite. She tried to bite Beaker's butt. That was like that yes. was I wish I caught that on video. I laughed so hard. I know. So we had our uh, (laughs) studio, makeshift studio here, and Ginger was on the table, and we were trying to get a picture, and then um, Beaker was there, and she got up, and then started to walk away, and Ginger, like, tried to bite her butt. (laughs) Right, Bunsen? Is that crazy? Sorry, Tracy. Go ahead. I'm just laughing. I didn't mean to take away from your time to speak. (laughs) Hi to Bunsen and Beaker and Ginger, since he got the barks in. Um, He got the barks in. So the other day, um, I used the hairdryer vacuum and then there was like the yearly fire drill for my apartment complex. Like it's a hundred year old building. They like call the fire department. Ooh. Everyone evacuates and then you stand out there for 20 minutes. And Ricky hid under the bed for two hours after that. Oh, it was he just, would not come out. It was too much. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a lot. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. But thankfully... The fire drills only once a year and we'll just space out the other stuff next time. <laughs> Not traumatize the cat. So poor Ricky. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm he's he, a good boy. Yeah. I like hearing Ricky stories. <laughs> Thanks Tracy. It's good to hear your stories this week. Uh, Gia. Hi. And then we'll go to doc and then Dr. Mar- Molly Carjun and then Donna. Um, Gia, good to see you in the space today. Yes, thank you. Uh, we listen to Pet Chat every morning with the kids while we're having breakfast. Aww. So I keep asking them if they have questions. And my 10-year-old today had the courage to ask. So he's here. Oh, okay. Are you ready? Okay, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Jason and Mr. Chris. Miss Chris. And Miss Chris. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Um. Uh. My name is Sammy, and I have two hamsters. One day I woke up to find one of them had eaten her sister since they were both female. Oh, no. And I'm not sure how I should feel about the one about the hamster that ate her sister. That's that is a that is a very shocking thing to find. Um, I'm sorry that happened. I think I think that happens sometimes with uh, with rodents and even dogs. Sometimes it 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 occurs. 
So I don't think you should feel it's anything like it's your fault at all. Um, I think you can feel sad that you only have one hamster now. I would feel sad. But I think the other hamster still needs your love and your, your care too. Okay. At another part, you wanna you said you asked if you wanted to get an should get another one. Should I get another hamster? Or would it be eaten? Oh, oh um I am not a hamster expert. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. There I kn- I think I did a story on the podcast or I uh, I was talking about that early on that there's some you know, there's some types of animals that will eat siblings or eat young. And it. I think it. De- what I'm trying to remember is I think it depends on the hamster breed. Some are really territorial um, and that just happens. So it would kind of depend, I think, on the breed of the hamster. But aside from that, I don't know much more. I'm just trying to remember from uh, podcast research I did like two years ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and some animals are territorial and work better if they're just in their own enclosure. Like turtles. Um, yes. So we have our turtles separated now because they like their space. Um, and I did that because they were feeling a lot better after I got them and I started taking care of them and feeding them correctly and giving them proper light and, and their water um, quality went up and they were feeling great. But that also meant that they couldn't be together. So in order to, to love them, we have to love them separately. Um, and that gives them their best life. Um, okay. I found the article. I found my research. I was going through my Google Drive. And th- what I wrote down was it depending on the hamster breed, dwarf breeds of hamster have the lowest chance of doing that cannibalization. So if it's a dwarf breed, they have the lowest chance. And then if it's a Syrian or Chinese hamster, they have a very high tendency to do it. I don't know if that helps, um, I, but that's just what my research notes say about the breed. That does. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was very... I am sorry as well to hear that that had happened. Mm-hmm. That's very and brave of you to ask that question too. Thank you. Mm-hmm. See? Thank you. Okay. Um, Doc, Molly Carjun, Dr. Molly Carjun. Hello. Hello. Hi. How's it going? I'm doing good. Um, I, you know, talking about, uh, about the, the dog cat interactions. I had to jump in cause I, uh, I have my new dog now that I'm fostering for the pen vet working dog center, which is the first dog I've ever actually owned. <laughs> so I might be, I might be sort of an on on the page dog expert, but I guess now I'm developing my in in real life skills. Um, but they like I was so I was just absolutely tense and anxious about the dogs getting getting along the dog getting along with the cats and like <laughs> making sure I do everything like buy this like giant pamphlet and that's the problem when you have too many trainers like <laughs> like it's like oh no what do I do it's like then other problems when you have 15 people who are like here is what you should do and it's all slightly different um and like literally the only time it worked is when I was just like you know what I'm just gonna relax and suddenly you know they like feed off of that so much Mm -hmm. that 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 suddenly the you know they both were just relaxing in the same room and I was like oh that was it. Also, my fire alarm also went off to whoever's fire alarm like at like two days ago and I walked down 25 flights of stairs with my dog and two cats and maybe that was a bonding experience for them (laughs) (laughs) how did you get your cats down like were they in a cat litter or do you have them on a leash they were in in carriers oh carriers okay they don't they do not love leashes or the outdoors i tried very hard but they were like please take me back in (laughs) like we do not like the outdoors so they were just in their carriers um and and dalton has been he was great he he loves people so like we were walking down you know and every every single you know like landing he would be like hello yeah <laughs> everybody everybody came out like hello <laughs> this is great i get to see all these people 
Then the firemen were on the third floor, and he was like, hello, I'd like to <laughs> go wherever you guys are going. I'm like, nope, we're leaving, <laughs> leaving the building. <laughs> He's like, I'll go help you. He wanted to. <laughs> what What are your cats named again? Uh, f- free, something with free. Freya? Free, Freya? Yeah, I have a Freya. Freya. I have a, I have a Valkyrie, but we call her a Kiri. Um, and, then, and then Mr. Dalton. Um, who's actually never lived in a home before. So that's another thing. He's only ever lived in a kennel. Mm. So he's, yeah, but now he's loving it. He's like, this is great. I love this. He's like, I have so many toys and I do all the things. That's Mm. awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time we talked, you were working with some detecting dogs. How's that going for you? Oh, it's going great. Yeah, that that paper, we just got comments back from the reviewer on our chronic wasting disease paper. We just submitted our COVID paper. We've been very productive in the past month. Um, uh-huh. Yay. We, uh, yeah, yay. And uh, and Dalton's actually, he came to us imprinted on explosives. So that's great. I'm like, sure, you can check my house just in case. Um, and- <laughs> can you imagine how stressed you'd be if he was like oh, alerting God. you? <laughs> like, no, oh, what, there's bombs in my house? Time. What? I know I worry about that sometimes because sometimes he's just really into like, you know, he's when he when he sniffs a little too long somewhere. I'm like, what's up, buddy? <laughs> like, no, it was just a good it was just a good smell. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he'll be doing, I think, uh, pancreatic cancer. We're starting a new study. So, oh, that's so be, cool. uh, really exciting. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who are wondering um, what we're talking about, Dr. Molly Carjun has been on the science podcast as a guest and then also in side chat and was part of really two really cool studies one was detecting covid in sweat it was sweat right yeah um, it was sweat mm-hmm. yeah and then chronic wasting disease in deer just like from that was from their poop poop right okay i was going to say yeah so they could do like a survey <laughs> yeah it's so cool well it was good to see you in our in our pet chat space yeah we are sort of we are sort of thrust into the 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 role of being pseudo experts in how to make cats and dogs get live together so if you have any um if you have any questions you could hit us up <laughs> <laughs> oh no i have way too, i honestly have way too much advice just okay relax. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it relax <laughs> thanks guys <laughs> you betcha that's good advice though right chris just relax because your pets can feel that that energy yeah that's true okay we'll go to donna and then maggie Hello, everyone. Hi, Donna. So I just got home from a long work trip, and it's Callie's gotcha day yesterday slash birthday. So today was celebration. Uh, so she's been living it up with some new toys. So she's got a fake carrot and a fake taco and a fake burger, and she's <laughs> just been bringing me food, quote unquote, all day. So um, it's been six lovely years with this feral kitty and uh, Tracy telling the fire alarm story uh, rings true. When I used to live in an apartment with Callie, uh, I can't get her into a kitty carrier. I will be murdered. So I just throw a blanket around her, grab her, go, where's the bra, phone and wallet and the cat and go trudging down the stairs. So thank God we live in the house now but um it's callie's eighth birthday and six gotcha day and she looks just like the cat version of of peachy's little uh guinea pig so i love your guinea pig already um super excited gonna get to meet kathy next week so thanks thanks to this um lovely birdie app and your chat and our little circle of friends i met uh one of our peeps last week in michigan and now i get to meet kathy this week and everybody's been so lovely and awesome and i can't wait wait to meet the rest of you in my travels someday so hit me up uh, and as far as food safety, Donna Craig goes, it is great that you buy organic lettuce and stay away from romaine for pets. Just saying. Okay. Um, that is uh, listeria. Um, romaine lettuce gets recalled more than any other lettuce in the world. So safety first for those pets, only the best for them. But thanks, guys. Uh, I've been missing uh, some of the chats. And when I listen to the replays, it's good hearing everyone's voices and keep doing what you're doing, being a bright spot. Thanks, Donna. 
Um, and also, thank you for being one of the guinea pigs. Um, no pun intended. So we had somebody talk about guinea pigs today. Uh, guinea pigs for pet of the month in the Paw Pack Plus community um, with that Google form. Well, of course, anytime, you know, if y'all need something, I'm down. So I'll write you a blog. I'll tell a story, uh, cracking the ladies up with my going to jail story. So um, I'm not going to tell you guys in this space, but one day we'll have one. But uh, yeah, I was super appreciative of you guys. Thanks, Donna. Okay, over to uh, Maggie. Maggie will be our last speaker, and then we'll wrap up with some uh, bookkeeping stuff and talk about Indra's space that's coming up tomorrow. Hello, Maggie. Hi. Hello. Um, hi. Thanks for having me on. Um, I wanted to share our exciting news that we adopted a new dog um, one month ago today. Um, oh. He's laying here on the bed with us right now. His name is Murphy. Um, Maggie is not happy with me about it, but um, <laughs> we're adjusting. Um, he's very cute. He's very sweet. He's very smart. Um, he's learned so much. He was a rescue uh, from Alabama. We're in Chicago. Um, and we get up here, we get a lot of dogs from the south. Um I guess because we're a big city and it's easier to get dogs adopted out. So they bring them up. Um, but so we're having a great time most of the time, except when Maggie gets sad and goes and pouts. Um, but I partly want to mention it. I seem to remember that you guys would somehow hook Beaker on to Bunsen when you were out walking, oh <laughs> yeah, am I making that up? Or no, that right? no, that's uh, when when Beaker was a puppy, we anchored her to Bunsen. It was hilarious. <laughs> and how would you do that, though? Is my question. Um, do you remember the type? Of, we still have that red leash. Like it was, uh, it was was it the red leash, Chris, with the two clickies? Yeah. Do you yeah. want go ahead? You might know more about that. I actually had that leash today when I <laughs> took the dogs out um, for a walk. Um, there are ones that you can buy that, uh, kind of split as a Y, but this uh -huh. one, um, it's over six feet long, um, and it has a clip at both ends. Um, and then it also has like a, a D clip. Um, so you can connect it to both dogs and then there's a ring in the middle. I'm just oh, looking for that brand name here. Uh, this one is, um, C E K nine um, equipment. So C E is the canine equipment. Um, okay. And I can maybe um, take a picture of it on the floor here, um, and then put it in the put it in the chat for you. That'd be great. Perfect. That seems to be our biggest issue now. Like now he's doing so much better with everything, um, and circling back to what other people are saying about being relaxed. That's such a huge piece to his learning mm -hmm. is, is my being relaxed. Um, and we're working on relaxation techniques um, with him, which Maggie apparently needs some refresher on also. But the walking outside, which we have to do since we live in the city, um, we have to do every day walking outside. It's just hard with two leashes. And so I was trying to figure out a better way to, mm. to do that. Well, it worked really good when Beaker was little and uh, like she was just a like gong show, right? She was <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and the size difference between the two of them meant that it didn't matter what Beaker did. She couldn't move Bunsen like at all. Um, so we <laughs> had that red leash. And when when Bunsen would lay down, we were just like, well, OK, he's basically like, you know, like a stake that you put in the ground. I've seen some dogs <laughs> sadly tied to that. Right. Like for temporary, it's yeah. OK. Right. But. Anyways, that was like our stake in the ground. And then we would just click her up to his harness because Bunsen has this harness that he wears um, mm -hmm. and it's got like a handle on it. So it's really good to steer him if we've got to like move like we could do a lot of hiking and those trails are really narrow. And Bunsen right. is oblivious to how huge his fuzzy butt is. And I don't want to have him <laughs> turn sideways and yeet somebody off the side of a mountain. So 
that's that harness can get him you know off to the side and we would just click the thing to it and then beaker would just be doing gong show whatever and as long as like bunsen would just lay down and go to sleep and then she would just have like a 360 degree circle of gong show ness but we knew she wouldn't be able to go anywhere (laughs) (laughs) i have to say too when murphy starts um going full um beaker um what do you you i've now forgotten what you always call it beakering uh, yeah just beakering he well so he needs his own name for that murphying <laughs> um i guess it doesn't work as quite as well um it, did you find that it seems to happen at the same time like in the evening i feel like right about now right about eight o'clock he is when he tends to go uh full full murphying did oh, that happen with her? Um, like they, they, they get um, Beaker, like a toddler, she'd get all buzzy right before nap time. So yeah, like <laughs> okay. at, at nighttime, yeah, she would have her uh, like puppy buzz and jump off. And, okay. Like once she got a little older, it was like full on like parkour around things. Yes. And, like on the couch, off the couch, like WWE yes. moves right on top of Bunsen's head. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. We're doing that. Well, because that's the thing. So he's, I'm calling him a puppy, but we don't actually know how old he is since he's this rescue. Mm -hmm. Um, And the best guess is maybe eight or nine months. Um, And yeah, so it is full parkour off my stomach. If I happen to be sitting on the couch, like it's, it's a little nuts. So, so then we go outside um, and we, there's a little park next door and we play ball in the park, but um Okay. Well, thank you for letting me share and thank you for the information. Um, and I didn't even look to see if Chris was able to put the picture up in the, yep. in the nest. I, I will definitely look at did. It. Uh, you can Google, um, like best two dog leashes or, uh, but I would just avoid a bungee, uh, type mm-hmm. because okay. bungee and like the retractable leashes. Oh, those are uh, terrible. Always encourage oh, yeah, never. pulling. Um, so ours is not, it's, uh, just the typical leash, uh, material that yeah. that's my only suggestion. And, and you can Google like, uh, best variety. Um, and th- they talk about like the qualities that you would want, like length or, um, uh, material or those kinds of things and, uh, thickness and things that might, you might not think of, but, uh, <laughs> just avoid that bungee. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Have a good night. You betcha. I want to give a shout out to Bark and Beyond Supply.com, our sponsor for the space tonight. Bark and Beyond Supply.com is in the chat right now, and we've put a bunch of their uh, products that they're selling uh, lately or they have tagged up into the nest. Bark and Beyond Supply.com is going to reward somebody who's in the space with a $20 gifts card. And I put the number into the random number generator and it spit out a number and I've counted who that person is. And as long as they're still in the space, they will win the prize. I'm just looking now. Oh, I think they left. I've got to do it again. I think they left. That's too bad. I do not see them anymore. Okay, we got to go again. Okay. Whoop. Press the wrong button. I love this. This is like the raffle number and it's like eight, seven, two, four, five, six. Oh, you know, but it, now there's like that other chance. I love it. Okay. It is down at the bottom. Katrina at Katrina Garrick. The number that I selected, you are the winner. Katrina Garrick. So if you can hear me, DM bark and beyond supply.com for your prize. Um, and I'd like to just uh, throw it over to Indra. Indra, do you want to talk about your space tomorrow? It's kind of new and exciting. Yes, thank you so much, Jason. And thank you, Chris, for this beautiful space. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I'm meal prepping for dinner and it is just the perfect entertainment. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I first of all want to just say I am loving the circle community that you have created. Wow. Oh, thank it you. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to navigate around. Uh, so really love, love, love that so much. And then last night, okay, so <laughs> I 
my husband's in the office, so the coast is clear, but he didn't want to admit that we had, last night we watched the Super Pets movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, don't tell them. I was like, oh, I can't wait to share it. And then he was like, no, don't tell them that I watched it. Anyway, we were just so delighted. We were so entertained, um, you know, and the superstar of that movie is, of course, uh, Superman's dog, Crypto, uh, <laughs> with <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> his voice, and even just thinking about the visual of that movie, it just cracks me up. And um, not to be too much of a spoiler for anybody that hasn't seen the movie, but there is a evil hamster, and that's I'm just going to leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> because it is uh, it's just super entertaining. And if you really want a good laugh, then definitely watch Super Pets movie. And no, I don't get any kickback from that movie, even though I'm producer. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> okay. So, well, um, you know what? If you do ever run into Dwayne the Rock Johnson with your movie producing, then you have to like get a, him to sign something for us, Indra. Oh, oh, absolutely. And, you know, I actually missed the opportunity. A few years ago, I was working out at uh, a gym uh, that a family member was was running, and there he was. He was right there. And I, and I was looking over. I was thinking, is that him? Is that not? Oh, my God. And they were all like, I was looking over at the staff, and they were all nodding yes. Like, they didn't even know what I was going to ask, obviously, but I was, it must have been the shock. <laughs> so... He is just as buff, and he had like two personal <laughs> trainers on him. He had two personal trainers at one. He was so probably lifting me. all of the weights and the personal trainers. Yes, yes, <laughs> there were like forty fives. There must have been six forty fives oh at least God. on the bench on the leg press, right? Oh as much God. as physically possible. <laughs> and, and and then uh, what was funny was at one point I was upstairs and I was you know. I was, you know, bench pressing my a huge amount, and um, and then I looked down, and one of his trainers, as a joke, was lying across the top as well as all of the weights on the leg press, <laughs> <laughs> all right? And uh, and there was a member of the staff, obviously the gym, that you know, were, were were pointing to get get down, like obviously, but. Uh, he could just lift everything, including I think the other trainer was about to jump up there as well. So <laughs> that was hugely entertaining, but um, I'm sure there's going to be more opportunities. Um, so, yes, it's always fun and games um, in the movie business, and they certainly are entertaining. And, yes, um, but back to the space topic, uh, Positivity Vibe Tribe, uh, Monday night space, which is at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is now introducing uh, music vibes. So every Monday night, uh, you can look forward to amazing musical guests and there's going to be some interview and then a little chill vibes with some music and back a little bit more interview. And our very first guest is a classical concert pianist, Sherry Grant. No way. Yes. Sherry's going to be yeah. your first guest? Oh, I yeah. love Sherry. I know. She is so, that is so cool. You have her as your first guest. <laughs> and bonus, her daughter is going to be accompanying her. So she's six years of age and she's going oh, to do some vocals. That's singing. precious. So, right? So, I mean, what an incredible first episode. So this is the beginning of our new episode. That's so cool. And, right? And so a couple of people that I've shared this with have said, Wait, well, where has the music come from? Well, music was my first passion. I played the violin when I was very young, and I was actually performing in three uh, three orchestras by the age of 12. Um, I don't play the violin anymore. And then next was uh, singing and songwriting. And then um, and so I had a music show that I was producing in, in Australia, in Sydney. And so music has always been a big part of my life. And so to obviously create this as part of the Positivity Vibe Tribe arm is going to be really fun. It's going to be a great element. And we are just so excited uh, to bring lots and lots of amazing guests. And we're also going to have, of course, Q&A section where everybody can chime in, meet the guests, share their thoughts, or hmm. ask some questions. So uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Jason and Chris for letting me share this amazing news. And um, until 
next time, or maybe Monday night, hope to see you all then. I'm sending your love, light, and blessings. Thanks, Indra. Hey, Chris, did you ever listen to the, you've listened to some of the Piano Avenger spaces, right? That's that's who she's talking about. That's part of that. Yeah. Yes, I absolutely have. Yeah, they're so good. Um, so if you're wondering, if you're like, whoa, who's Indra? Indra is <laughs> Indra is our partner. Um, and we've partnered with Indra because what Indra does with her spaces is the sit like a, a super good fit. Like we do the science, we do the pets, and her spaces are the mindfulness and the mental health spaces. So if you need a boost, and especially like if you just want to chill, these Monday spaces are gonna be amazing. Um uh, the guest that she's having is just a fantastic piano player. I was listening to one of their spaces uh, and I think I asked her to play some video game music and she did. So I was so tickled pink. <laughs> um, so thanks, Andrea. Make sure you check that out. That's up in the nest for everybody to take a look at. So in closing, as we wrap up, um, if you haven't uh, checked out the text from Bunsen ebook, uh, again, that's our on our pin profile. Anybody that picks that up gets put into our circle community, the text from Bunsen area for free. So it's kind of like a, something we've kept kind of on for secret, but it's not a secret anymore. Um, you get that for free for getting the ebook. And then that that area gets updated with all of the text from Bunsen that didn't make the ebook plus text from Beaker twice a week. So it's like ongoing content um, for for text from Bunsen. All right, I think that's about it. We'll do our little wrap-up music here. Um, thanks so much for everybody coming to Pet Chat tonight. You could be anywhere in the world and you're listening to ga- uh, Chris and I talk about our dogs and, and the cat, play games and share community. To all of our speakers, thanks for tuning in, sharing your stories, giving up your time with that. Our sponsor, BarkAndBeyondSupply.com. Thank you so much. Um, make sure that the person who won gets a hold of you to get your $20 gift certificate. Uh, Chris, anything else to say? Um, I would, but I have Barky McBurkson sitting beside me again. Okay. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. We really appreciate you. We appreciate you and you can listen to Bunsen Bark. Um, <laughs> there it goes. There he goes. <laughs> um, to the people listening on Facebook live. Thank you so much. Uh, that's really cool that <laughs> the Facebook Live just went rogue and they're having their own show in the comment section, which is kind of funny. And uh, we had you know over 50 people listening on Wisdom, though, so thanks for listening to our multicast there. I am working on increasing our multicast somehow to Instagram and TikTok. So that's the next, that's Operation Be Everywhere All at Once. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, just check out our profile and sign up with an email. We don't spam you. It's only once a week. And we should have some information tomorrow about the Paw Pack Plus for the public. Okay, take care, everybody. We hope to see you on Tuesday for Science Chat. Uh, We have a brain scientist. So all about the brain. Okay, take care, everybody. Oh, I didn't have my sound effect I didn't have my sound effect cued for the brain, Chris. Oh, pinky and the brain? Yeah, that's what I had. I had a pinky and the brain sound effect for the brain scientist. And then... Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Right, and I screwed it up, so... That's okay. Yeah. Okay, take care, everybody. See you on Tuesday. Well, hopefully I'll see some of you in Indra space. Okay, bye-bye.